All right, guys. Um, I've had a couple days to process the the uh, loss on Saturday night now, so thought I'd make a post game video, even though my in game video kind of summed up everything I wanted to say. Thought I'd kind of put a bow on it and talk about it now that I've had a little bit of time to think about it. So I I, I think everybody kind of knows what there is to say about this game. Um, one side of the ball was fantastic. And I got to give a huge shout out once again to the defense. They brought it on Saturday night. They played as good as they could. I, I don't really have anything bad to say about those guys. And if you didn't watch the game, just know it's all about context. Um, Oregon scored 26 points. I think they had something like six scoring drives. And on almost every one of those drives... We had Oregon in third and long, and Vernon Adams Jr. did some crazy shit in the pocket and bought time and found a receiver down the field. And I cannot bring myself to get that mad at this, this defense for that. That's not the defense messing up. That's Vernon Adams Jr. doing some man stuff. So, to me, you just got to tip your cap. And some people are free to disagree. Some people should say, oh, well, we should contain um, Adams in the pocket better. Or, you know, we should make some more plays. Or we should cover down the field longer. And, you know, you're all entitled to that. But for me, that was just Vernon Adams doing his thing. And other than those big third down and long plays by the Oregon offense, they weren't exactly smoking up and down the field. I mean... Royce Freeman had a good game, but he didn't smoke us. I mean, you've seen the stuff Royce Freeman has done to other teams this season. We didn't do all that bad. We held him to five yards a pop. Um, he had some good carries as the game went along, but we actually did a pretty good job of containing him. And this defensive line was great the whole game. Um, it would have looked better against most other quarterbacks in the league, but Vernon Adams Jr. brought his big boy pants on Saturday night and routinely made people miss and evaded pressure. So, I don't know. I can't bring myself to get mad at the defense for that. 26 points against Oregon is good enough on its own, but when you factor in the fact that most of that was just Oregon executing and playing as well as they did, there's nothing to get mad at. I'm very impressed by this defense. And they did it without Victor Azim for the first half. And Victor Azim is one of their key players. And now uh, Clay, you know, he missed the end of the game. He's going to miss the first half against Stanford, which, well, it seemed like he deserved that one. But, um, so yeah, the defense, fantastic. Offense. Um, you know, I'd give the defense an A. And the only reason I can't give the defense an A plus is because they didn't force a turnover. The offense... C minus, pretty disappointed in that side. And, you know, I understand that Browning didn't play great. He played pretty good. He missed some throws. He made some throws. But um, he just played pretty good. Um, I know the offensive line didn't play that well. And I know um, Devon Coleman, or you know, the running back, the backup running back, dropped an easy touchdown pass. I mean, he was already in the end zone. It was a done deal, and he just let it bounce off his hands. So the players need to execute. I agree with you 100%. I know that, you know, people who are going to disagree with what I'm going to say here are going to say that. Yes, the players need to execute better. But I'm really disappointed in the game plan. For this game more than anything a couple players missed a couple opportunities to make plays but for the first 25 minutes of this game the offense looked pretty much like they did against um, Boise State in week one very safe very conservative um, you know we're gonna just protect our true freshman quarterback we're gonna give him easy throws and we're going to punt, we're going to punt, we're going to punt, and we're going to basically just make sure our true freshman quarterback doesn't melt down. 
I'm totally okay with that after in in game one. We're in game six now. So to see us coddle Jake Browning in this game number six, I I didn't like it. I mean, this is a team with a very soft secondary, and it's an opportunity for him to grow up. It's an opportunity for him to exploit an opposing team's defense and win a game. And I felt like we did not give him the chance to do it. And it wasn't until right before the end of the first half that we opened things up at all. And he did some pretty good stuff once we opened things up a bit. But even in the second half, it was there was some good stuff I saw from the game plan, but there was some other stuff that just left me scratching my head. So, to me, that's where the opportunity to win this game was lost. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like the game plan for the Huskies was, we will give ourselves a chance to win if we get a special teams or defensive touchdown. If we don't get one of those two things, then we're just going to play to not get embarrassed. And that's kind of what it felt like. I don't know. May, I mean, I could be totally off on this. And in all fairness, the offensive line did not play a very good game. And when the offensive line isn't doing their thing, it's hard to make plays down the field. But I feel like there's something else we could have done <clears throat> to maybe open things up. Because... This was an opportunity for, even if we don't win, this might have been an opportunity for Jake Browning to grow up and, and um, you know, turn into somebody we know is going to be our guy going forward. And I don't feel like that after this game is over. I don't feel like he played bad. I don't feel like he lost us the game. I don't feel like he did anything above and beyond what I expected. I just felt like he played pretty good. And I feel nothing beyond that. I don't feel like, oh yeah, this is going to be the guy who competes for the Heisman in two years. I'm not there. I just feel like he played pretty good. We lost. He could have played better. But he played okay. That's that's all I got. And I don't think the game plan allowed for anything more than that. Um, other than that, Miles Gaskin played a good game. Obviously, it was mostly all two carries. He had one carry for 35 yards and another carry for 72 yards. Other than that, it was hit or miss with the running game. But they, um, Gaskin, I got to give him props. He he kept us in the game when it looked like it was over. Um, so, yeah, I'm disappointed that the game plan wasn't a little more bold. I mean, we punted on a fourth and one at the opposing 40. And then we punted on fourth and a foot in the second half when the game looked like it was just about over. thats I know the running game was a little inconsistent, but you know, run a quarterback, sneak up the middle, try to pick up that yard. Do something to try to steal a possession away from Oregon. Because we saw repeatedly last night, or Saturday night, Oregon, they were going to... They were going to convert those third and longs. There was nothing we could do to guarantee um, getting off the field. So that's how I feel. In all fairness, what the coaching staff did is defensible. It's not just completely stupid. He's still a young quarterback. It's still a young team. It's a young offensive line. I understand why they did what they did. But... I just personally don't agree. Uh, hopefully Jake Browning's okay. Um, I understand that his injury is not a long-term thing, but there's no guarantee he's going to be ready for this Stanford game coming up, and that's going to be a tough one, but I'll talk more about that later. Um, so, mixed bag at the end of the day. I see some things on this team I like, saw some things I didn't like at the end of the day. Not too surprised with the result, and... Got to keep moving forward. See you guys when it's time for me to make another video.